this is my first ever vlog that I've made. I've been kind of wanting to do vlogs for a little while now, um, and so I had a lot of ideas of what I would like to do when I started vlogging, and basically I can't do any of those right now since we are in quarantine and I'm mostly stuck in my house except for maybe allowed outside for one walk a day. I feel like this whole video has potential to feel like a time capsule of what life is like right now. Um, so if like aliens or people in the future stumble across it, they'll be like, what is she talking about? Why is she talking about being stuck in quarantine and not being allowed outside her house? Why is she dressed like an 18th century milkmaid? They'll just have so many questions basically. But that's where we are right now. That's the life that we are living. So today for my vlog, since I am not really allowed to go many places, I thought I would just take you on a walk in the park where I live, because my house is kind of located inside a park technically. So when I say I live in a park, I don't mean that I live in a hollow tree. I do live in a house, just my house is located inside a park. And that's where we're gonna go today. I wanna take my dog on a walk because he needs the exercise. So I'm hoping today that I can find some flowers, um, make this video, show you some interesting things around the park, maybe hear some birds, and give Solomon enough exercise so that he doesn't chew my face off in boredom. Some really simple goals there. So with that in mind, let's go on a walk. <laughs> If you look over here at this bit of land, it looks like it's just part of the land jutting into the lake, but it is actually a Cranog, which is a man-made island. And they would have built those back in the day, like in the time of Viking raids and things, um, as a way to keep their valuables safe. So if they're being raided or they had to flee, they'd put all their valuables on the Cranog and then they would go away and they'd have the thought that their things would still be there. And with this particular Cranog, actually, in recent excavations, they found a set of giant ancient elk antlers, which is a type of elk that used to be native to Ireland, but is extinct now. So it's really cool. You wouldn't know by looking at it that it's a Cranog. You wouldn't know that there were antlers there or anything like that, but it is really cool if you do know a little bit of the history that what is there. What you see behind me is an old hermitage. The park that I live on used to be former manor house grounds, so this hermitage was built when the Lord and Lady of the Manor were still in residence. And it comes from a period in art history and history where people wanted their gardens to look more wild and unkempt. So they would build these hermitages and then they'd actually hire hermits to live in them. And the hermits were supposed to live as off the land as they could and be kind of wild looking and frighten women and maybe recite poetry with the men. Many different hermitages though would actually just have dummies in them to look like hermits. They wouldn't hire an actual person. But we do know that this hermitage did have a hermit in residence living in it at one point, although obviously no longer.
All of the green that you see growing around here is actually wild garlic, which is one of the easiest plants to forage for in the woods that you can eat. What you typically eat are the leaves. Now, wild garlic does look like lily of the valley and a couple other plants which are poisonous. Um, you might even recall, if you're a fan of Outlander, that this was a plot point in the first book and season of Outlander, is that two young boys got poisoned. Um, they thought they were eating wood garlic, but they were probably eating Lily of the Valley, and then everyone thought they were possessed. But Claire managed to figure it out and save the kid's life. So you do have to be a little bit careful. Although I will say that wild garlic has a very strong odor. You can already smell it when you're walking in the woods. It smells like garlic or onions. If you are still kind of not sure, if you break off a leaf and then break it, it'll have a very strong, distinct odor to it, so there should be no question about what it is. Um, and you can use it in a variety of different recipes. You can just eat the leaves in salads, or you can make a pesto with it. There's a lot of things you can do with it. It's not blooming yet, but when it does bloom, it'll also be easier to tell what is wild garlic and what isn't. The white flowers that you do see blooming are wood anemone, they're not wild garlic. Um, although I, I find a wild garlic bud, I will show it to you so you can tell what it looks like. Once you see that, you know that it is wild garlic. Although that said too, the best time to pick wild garlic is before it starts to go into blossom. So right now when it's all just green is when the leaves are supposed to be their tastiest.